I am 3 no 3. I hope you enjoy this. Warning, hydrochloric acid is some bad stuff. So this is all of the copper substance with black flakes that we had left from episodes 4 and 5 of the Brass, Copper, Zinc, and Acid series. Hey, wait, 3. Does that mean we're done with the chicken? So this is material left over from the Brass, Copper, Zinc, and Acid series. So it is part of the chicken, but we decided to change the title. It looks like mostly pure copper, but the black color in there could be a number of things. It could be silver. It could be zinc oxide. It could be copper one oxide, which could all be black. Since we're not sure the exact composition of what we started with, it could also be another metal that we haven't even talked about. The majority of the copper substance, since it has that brownish color, could be copper 2 oxide, which does have that brown color. A hydrochloric acid test would be the best way to figure all this out. So we put all the copper substance into a beaker. And we have here a 2 molar solution of technical grade hydrochloric acid. We'll start with just a little bit at a time here to see if we get any type of reaction. If it is pure copper, it should not react at all with hydrochloric acid alone. If it's zinc oxide or a copper oxide, it will dissolve in the hydrochloric acid. Initially, there's no really obvious reaction. You could see something happening in there, but it wouldn't even show up on film. It was so small, and there's no bubbles to indicate that anything's getting dissolved. So we added just a little bit more, and since there wasn't much happening, I wanted to test the hydrochloric acid since I just opened this bottle. best way to test the acid was to use a piece of aluminum. This is just a very small piece off of a can tab that I'll put in another beaker and then add some of the hydrochloric acid to it. In less than a minute it produced a vigorous reaction like you would expect of aluminum in hydrochloric acid. I put the beaker on top of a glove so you could see a little bit better. And within a couple minutes, the piece of aluminum was completely dissolved in the hydrochloric acid. The copper substance, on the other hand, was showing no reaction, although there were visibly less black specks in it. This is a small piece of the zinc that we used to displace the copper in part four of the brass copper zinc and acid series. So I put it in the same beaker that we dissolved the aluminum in and almost instantly there was a reaction. Then something unexpected happened. When the zinc dissolved, it left behind what looked like a copper residue. I can only assume that the zinc displaced more of the copper than was originally apparent. So I added some distilled water. I combined both of the liquids and both of the solids. I put all of the liquid into this water bottle for storage. Now that I had all the solids together, it still looked like there were some black flakes. So I decided to turn this into copper chloride. So I added back in some more hydrochloric acid. And this time I added hydrogen peroxide to it. You can see that this time almost instantly there was a color change. It was getting dissolved, but not fast enough. So I had to break out the super scientific hot plate again. 
I turned it up to a moderate heat and got some reactions going. It looks like it's almost all dissolved. So whatever's left behind is probably some sort of impurity. So I ran it through a funnel with a paper filter. And then I transferred what was left into the evaporation dish. And of course, back to the super scientific hot plate. As it started to reduce, it started to become a more pronounced green color instead of the lighter blue color. And now it's almost dry. And here it's starting to crystallize. So this looks like copper 2 chloride, nice green color. The brown spots are probably anhydrous copper chloride, which turns that coppery brown color. So I took a little bit of this out and put it in the Petri dish to give crystals something to seed to. And then the rest of it I'll take and rehydrate and reduce a little bit and then add to the petri dish so three why are you all about crystals now crystals are usually an indication that you have a pure substance in this case copper chloride and the more pure the substance the better crystals you get Okay, there's the liquid, and we got it reduced and in the petri dish. This is the rest of the liquid that will contain the aluminum and zinc and probably some copper. Here you can see the beginnings of good crystal growth from the copper chloride solution. I will post updates on the crystal growth to my Patreon page. Please see the link in the description. The end.